good afternoon. I'm Estefania Perez. They are my colleagues, Alberto Roldam and Marina Garrido. And from El Bio Grupo's team, we bring you an interview. An interview with Rose. We hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, it will be interesting. And maybe for the youngest, it will be used for the near future. Talking about nature, we know every day we need to, to face a lot of issues. And the most important issue is the loss of biodiversity. And for that reason, the IUCN, it was created 72 years ago. And Rose is, uh, has been the, the last student who completed uh, the, the internship with IUCN. Uh, we know uh, recently the period to up before this internship uh, has started. We'd like uh, Rose help us and tell us how was his uh, her experience, uh, ideas, uh, advice, and of course, what uh, what will uh, be uh, her next step. And finally, uh, we're lucky because Mariana Garcia is with us, and she's a Spanish environmental scientist. He got that uh, uh, the same the same um, internship uh, six years ago. So we have the present and the past. We we have a different point of view. So, Rose, Mariana, thank you to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, we'll start with Rose, please. Um, first of all, tell us a little about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, what did you study in, at the university? So, I come from Poitiers. So, it's a small town in the west of France. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I did my studies uh, at the university in Lille. So, it's a city oh, in, the, Lille. in the north of France. Uh, so, it's quite close to Brussels. Uh -huh. And I studied uh, sustainable development. Now I'm uh, in a master's degree, and so this internship oh. is to like to finish my degree, and then I will graduate in September. Mm -hmm. Because to apply for this internship, we need to to be a student. So you mm -hmm. you are studying a master. So okay. So to put in context, everyone. Can you can you tell us please what what is the IUCN and what is its main role? Yeah, sure. So IUCN is the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Mm -hmm. So it's an international organization. Uh, it's composed of governments and uh, civil society organizations, and uh, it works in the field of uh, nature conservation and uh, for the sustainable use uh, of natural resources. Basically, it tries uh, to influence uh, businesses, governments, mm. by providing them with some information or by building some partnerships. One of example uh, of, uh, of action that they do and for which they are really famous is uh, the red list of, the st of uh, threatened species. And so this uh, red list is made in order to assess the conservation status of species across the, the world. Across the world, because mm. probably people know that there there is a headquarters only in Brussels, but it's not only in Brussels, it's all over the world and mm. there are a lot of head, uh, headquarters. Maybe if, if we focus only in Europe, can you tell us some cities? Yeah, sure. So the general headquarters are in Europe, actually. It's uh, in a city called Gland. In Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, and then you have all over the world you have eight uh, regional offices so for each uh, territory uh, for each continent and so we have one in Europe which is in Brussels so it's where I'm at uh, currently and then uh, beside these eight regional offices you have some offices in more than like uh, more than 60, I think, our countries. So, mm -hmm. and for this internship, you need only speak English, or maybe, or oh, there are a lot of languages. Or so, um, officially, the IUCN uh, has three official languages, which oh, are good. English, mm -hmm. French, and Spanish. But you don't have to speak French or Spanish to do this internship. We because we, you will only work in English then it can be 
an advantage if you speak another language like French, Spanish or German because sometimes we do some documents in other languages and as an intern you can uh, have to to correct uh, the documents so it's I mean it's mm. good if you have another language but it's not yeah. mandatory. I guess so. it's also in Europe because here in Europe there are so many countries with so many languages yeah I mean, it's even more an advantage here to know more languages than for example let's say in South America that they mm. have uh, mainly uh, two, two main languages. Yeah exactly because we work with all European countries So, I mean, it's good if you speak another language uh, mm -hmm. in the Euro uh, from Europe. But. So, for, um, for this internship, um, we'd like to know how, how did you find out uh, this internship with IUCN? So, I found it on, the, on their website, actually, because... No, yeah. no, a blog or at no. the university, someone tells you, told no. you. Because, uh, I mean, we were talking a lot about IUCN uh, at my mm -hmm. university and I was following their work for several years, like on social media. But, uh, so yes, when I was looking for an internship, mm -hmm. I checked regularly uh, their website mm -hmm. and I saw this offer and uh, it was like, it's for me. <laughs> and there is all the information. <laughs> yeah. The important question of the question and... <laughs> what's happened what's happened with with internship they pay you they don't pay you you want to work it's your 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 probably first work but not is job sorry but it's not a real job it's yeah. it's always when, when you fin just finish uh finish uh, your your degree is i want mm. to work but yeah so yeah i mean it's part of the of your formation So mm -hmm. it's not a real job because you're still you're still learning, and so no, it's unfortunately it's not paid, uh, but they help with the uh, transports and lunches. So you get a stipend of one hundred and fifty euros per month. Yeah, and then uh, you also entitled uh, to an Erasmus grant uh, mm -hmm. if you enroll uh, uh, in a, in a university in Europe. And you want to work abroad, but in a European country, you should be entitled to this grant. So it's approximately 350 euros a month. So yes, the stipend plus the grant are not enough to be able to live in Brussels. So you have to to add some personal resources. Yeah, you have, have a, a little help. Yeah. Now that, that is have good. The most of uh, companies um, usually they don't pay you anything, right? At least in uh, Spain, right, guys? <laughs> And unfortunately for us, it's also missing. Yeah, <laughs> 300 euros. It's, well, you need to consider that Brussels is a very expensive city. So even... <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. But it's a little But it, help. She also has now a grant on her CV. That's also a plus. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and well, you you start to work, uh, weeks go by, and you I think your daily life. So how is your work? Uh, how is your normal day in your life there in Brussels? Um, so I would say it changed a lot between the beginning of my internship and now. I. D I don't think I have a routine properly, but mm -hmm. because at the beginning I had a lot of formations. So, okay. uh, for example, for all the administrative work I had to oh. be formed, but also for uh, performing the consistency checks, which are a big part of this internship. So, like I will explain it to you, it's like it consists in um, verify that the assessments made by the experts for the red list to verify that it corresponds to IUCN's uh, methodology and criteria. criteria. So um, you have a formation uh, for this, like it lasts uh, two weeks approximately, it's online. So yes, at, at the beginning of my internship, that was uh, there was uh, a lot of formation. And then I have, it really depends on the period. I really have different tasks. So for consistent, consistency checks, I spend approximately three hours a day. Mm -hmm. And then I also work a lot on a communication task on a, about a invasive alien species. And so it represents also approximately three hours a day. 
And then, depending on the week and the month and the period, I work on other projects. So, for example, right now I'm working on the uh, pollinator project uh, to uh, identify all the initiatives across Europe, okay. across Europe to safeguard uh, pollinators in order to establish an online map. But this work, for example, will only take me one hour a day for, I don't know, two weeks maybe, and then I will have other tasks. So there is no real routine, it always changes a lot. And uh, the missions uh, are really diverse. And uh, also my tutor, Katarina Ferreira, and my colleague, uh, Gabriel Flynn, they let me organize all uh, my agenda like as I want. So provided that the work is done, I can organize my days as I wish. Very interesting and <laughs> muy variado, very, very different every day. Yeah, right. exactly. Right, right. So I think Alberto has some questions. Yeah, uh, hi Rose. Uh, hi. Alberto is here. Um, peace at all. Hi again and thanks for your words and your time. Well, once you have told us about the IUCN, your internship and what it was about, I would like to ask you about the steps that you have followed to achieve this internship and every possible advice that you could um, have collected for us during this time. When I was thinking about the question to ask you, I I feel uh, very overwhelmed and shocked because I imagine myself preparing the the interview. I don't know, but is uh, as many of our listeners I suppose I feel very embarrassed. So therefore, the the first question that came to my mind was how uh, how did you prepare the interview for this application at the IUCN? Um, so first, I prepared. Uh like a presentation of myself, of my ed educational and professional path, uh, and how my uh, previous experiences would, um, would help me to, to achieve the task uh, of the internship. Uh, I also learned everything about uh, IUCN, about the organization, uh, about the work that they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. So you first uh, learn about the organization and try to find the, the problems and try to help them with your, yeah. your job. And would you give us any advice to avoid making mistakes when we are preparing a job application? Yeah, so I think that you have really to be well prepared on the organization, to be well documented, uh, also to have identified the missions of the internship, what you have, you will have to do in order to present yourself uh, while making sure that um, that you prove the uh, you prove the interviewers that you that you will be able to to help them that you will really bring something uh, to the organization. But also, I would say that you. You don't have to be uh, afraid to be honest because an internship is always uh, an opportunity to to learn and so it's normal that you don't know how to perform all of the tasks and you really have to be honest about it because they will feel it and they know that you're not uh, you don't <laughs> have all the ability and so um, yeah i would say that uh, the main the most important thing when you don't know about one of the tasks is to show that you're really willing to to learn and you're really mot motivated to learn. Uh, me, for example, I don't. Uh, I'm studying so sustainable development and I don't have um, a formation, a uh, universitarian background in uh, ecology or in biology. But a big part of the internship uh, with the consistency checks is to uh, verify a red list. Um, so you have to have some notions uh, in these fields, but I really showed during the interview that uh, I'm really interested by uh, by uh, conservation, by ecology, and that I'm really I was really curious about it and willing to learn, and so they saw that I was motivated to commit myself in this formation. So yeah. It was not a problem. Yeah, it's a it's a bit different between a job application and an intensive application. You know, you need to show your interest. They know that you don't know everything about the yeah. the, field, the work. Exactly. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, anyway, I I want to know about 
if you consider that you have any special ability or experience or maybe a, a course at the university that uh, have helped you to stand out uh, to achieve this internship at the IUCN? Um, so I had some volunteering uh, experiencing, uh, experiences for the Ligue de Protection des Oiseaux, so it's a French organization uh, for conservation of birds. And um, I knew a bit about conservation work and I had done some uh, experiences with them in communication, sensibilization. So I think that was a, a good point in my, uh, in my resume. I also had some experiences uh, in event planning and uh, part of the internship is to help uh, in the administ administrative and logistical uh, uh, organization of the different events. So um, I think that through my experiences, they saw that uh, I had, I would be able to help uh, with some, and I would be quite autonomous in my work and quite proactive, uh, whether it be for the different tasks or whether it be in my formation to the red list. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Everybody's taking notes, I, su I suppose. <laughs> Well, talking about your, your skills throughout your career, what subjects or professional courses do you consider to be more, more useful or, or interesting to make your current work at the, at the IUCN? Well, all of the technical knowledge I acquired, I learned, I learned it here like during my, uh, my two weeks formation uh, at IUCN. I didn't mm -hmm. have a background in the, this kind of matter, so. Yeah. Uh, but um, at school, the the course that were the more useful to understand the IUCN's work uh, were all the courses about uh, environmental policies uh, at different levels, whether it be because we work a lot with the European Commission here in Brussels, so. Um, it was uh, really good to have a background to understand the role of a UCN in uh, European uh, policies for conservation. But I wouldn't say that it's a criteria to have followed this this kind of course. I mean, even if you don't follow any course about policies or anything, you will discover and learn during your internship. And on the contrary, I didn't have any classic courses on uh, on technical or scientific. Uh, knowledge related to ecology but I think that if you have some it's really good because it will help you in your formation to related to the red list so I don't think there are any they don't wait for you to to have any particular knowledge background knowledge just I would say a curiosity about the the subjects uh, that they work on and a desire to learn yeah, you don't need to, to, to have a, a big background in the biology field. So yeah. You don't need to show interest and uh, learn during the, the, the first two weeks of the, of the internship and exactly. during the, the, the rest of the, of the internship. Yeah, exactly. It's great to, to hear it because I was thinking about Apple for this internship. Okay, well, <laughs> you should, definitely. <laughs> well, now I would like to change the, the focus of the interview and talk with you about the, the things that you have learned and what have changed in your life and in your job during this, this time. So I guess that this uh, internship not only has permitted you to develop yourself personally, but also professionally. Therefore, uh, what do you think that have been the most remarkable change in, in both aspects? Um, have they helped you to be more efficient in your daily routine? Well, I would say, uh, I would say that, um, yeah, I'm feeling way more efficient because f at first it can be, you take longer to perform the tasks because you're still learning, but as uh, time passes by, you get more comfortable, so you're more efficient and you do things more quickly and in a better way. Uh, but I also think that I learn a lot about um, prioritizing uh, tasks because the fact that you're working on several tasks at the same time, you have to organize your agenda 
And so you have to learn to do more urgent stuff at fir- uh, in, fir- in a first uh, time and then the less urgent one. So this I learned it during this, uh, this internship and also the fact that I work with different colleagues on different projects, it really developed uh, my ability to communicate within a team. For example, if I have something really urgent to, to do for one of my colleagues, but I also have some work for another colleague, I will, I will not be afraid to tell the other colleague that I have some more, more urgent stuff to do. And I think it's really important within a team like to communicate. And uh, yeah, this is also something that I discovered during this internship. And personally, I feel like I really gained some confidence thanks to this internship because the fact that you have some real uh, responsibilities, you feel like you fully take part in the in the life the life of the organization, and uh, you really feel useful. You really feel that your work has an impact. So it really helped me gain some confidence. So uh, for you, it's is a very good experience because you you have learned to to work with a team and work alone and organize organize yourself and for personally uh, it's, it's necessary to fly uh, from home no yeah yeah that's it exactly <laughs> and well the next the next question i have for you is that participating in a in an internship like like that uh, must change your point of view in some different ways so as a result of, of it have you started to, to learn or develop any special ability like um, such as an informative program or any technique with relevance in conservation? Not really, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I learned how to use the tools that we use at IUCN, but these are really specific uh, tools that that are only used at IUCN. For example, we work on SIS, which stands for, I don't remember. Which is information system, if yeah. I recall. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's it. But uh, they only use it uh, here at IUCN. But I think that, uh, yes, I, I, don't, I didn't have time during this internship because it's quite uh, intense. You have a lot of things to do. So I didn't have time to learn any new um, new informatic program, but I mean, I would consider learning programs like KG, so yeah, that could be useful um, in the future. You don't, you don't have so much time doing this internship, but maybe uh, you have uh, new de- ideas for the, for the future, no? Uh, you mean for me personally? Person- about um, any technique or something like that oh, for the... Yeah. In your work for the future. For my work, I don't, I don't really know. But in the conservation field, I mean, they are already developing a lot of techniques uh, that are really interesting. For example, uh, they put some uh, radars on trees so that uh, when people uh, want to log the trees, like uh, cut the trees off, but. Uh, silly go they can hear it from uh, far away and they can come uh, so yeah they are developing a lot of uh, interesting te- techniques uh, in conservation already so yeah <laughs> okay that, that's great well in in relation with the with the next question i will say that um, a reflection of my my own because i believe that when we talk with a friend about his or her job he only tells about how beautiful or wonderful is his or her job, but he don't tell us about the, the bad things, the, the things that make him get upset or maybe feel annoying or embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to ask you about, as your first professional experience in conservation, has it fulfilled uh, your expectations? Are there any... Anything that you would you would like to change or something like that? Yeah, so I think uh, it fulfilled my expectations because I was really hoping to discover the work of conservation, but in uh, its different aspects. 
and I, I really had the opportunity to see all the aspects of conservation. But I think something I would improve, but I'm only talking about IUCN, it's that uh, there are a lot of, <laughs> of administrative things, uh, <laughs> like, and I hate it, really, I hate it, like, to establish the contracts, and it's okay. actually, it's really long, and uh, it represents, uh, but for all the teams at IUCN, it represents a big part of the job and I will just simplif simplify it uh, <laughs> because uh, I feel like it's quite useless. But... Bureaucracy is a mess everywhere, huh? it's, <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I understand you, Rose, because every one of us think that conservation is going out to the nature, but mm. of course it's a, an administrative work and yeah. we forget uh, about it. What about you, Mariana? Do you remember something that disappointed you at the IUCN or something that you wanted to change? Um, not that I was disappointed per se, but uh, maybe something that I thought could be improved is that even though IUCN has a very good relationship with policymakers in general, because as Rose was saying, they work a lot with the European Commission and so on, um, sometimes it's difficult to put the science and all the knowledge that IUCN produces, for example, through the Red List, um, in the political process. So I would like to see more of evidence-based science guiding policy and legislation in the future. Yeah, I think it's necessary. And it's very difficult to to combine both both aspects. Yeah, it's a, it's a pity, but it's the world that... And lastly, to to end this part of, the, of this section, I have, I, I believe that I have a really special question for you, Rose, and it's what is the, the most wonderful memory uh, you have uh, from this, this experience? Um, the most wonderful memory, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Actually, the my experience was a bit uh, weird because of the COVID, so I had to do a big part of this internship, uh, so... Um, uh, yeah, I think it wasn't the best uh, way to discover uh, a working area as an internship is supposed to make you to make you discover uh, an organization. Yes, it was really good because I I was in a great team and even remotely they were always um, helping me uh when i encountered difficulties so i was really lucky for that and also they always trusted my work even if they didn't see me work because uh, well uh, we were all at home and uh, but they, they they really trusted uh, what i did and i think that the best uh, memory will be maybe uh, an assessment workshop that we did but obviously it was remotely but it was really great because uh, it was a whole day of uh, exchange. Each one of us was at home. Uh, all the experts were in their respective countries at home, but uh, we were able to to exchange. And I think it was particularly good uh, because it was a period that was a bit difficult because all of us uh, were stuck at home. And and yeah, that was a bit. Uh, it was really particular, but. There are some good things also. So I'm glad uh, of you. Um, uh, well, thanks for your words. Uh, I think that that was my my last question. And now I'm going to leave you with my teammate uh, Marina, who has a very interesting uh, question for you and for Mariana too. Well, hello Mariana. Hello Rose. Hi. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you here and to have both of you here. So it really is impressive, Rose, to see how you've acquired so many skills during, during this internship. It really is amazing. And it's clear that this experience has marked your career path. Uh, Would you see it has also changed uh, the way you realize about the daily impact you could have in, on the environment? Yeah, I, I think I was, really, I was really into environment before doing this internship, so I don't think it really changed the way that I uh, realized my impact uh, on, uh, on mm -hmm. the environment, but it made me even more willing to <laughs> to work in this field. Yeah, uh, that, that's impressive. I mean, it's 
It's true that I still there's so many people that work on conservation and it's difficult to realize little things that you're doing in your daily lives, right? That mm-hmm. have an impact and maybe you, you're not thinking about it. So it's great to meet someone that is so committed with the environment. But yeah, unfortunately, not everyone has the chance to work on an institution like the IUCN or have a hands-on experience with conservation. If you could choose uh, one action to say to anyone that is that you meet at the street, so they improve uh, the, the actions they're doing to protect the environment, what will it be? Uh, I mean, I think in a general way, we, we can hold help uh, preserve uh, the planet only by uh, changing our daily routine actions for example just the fact that you choosing to to consume uh, locally and seasonally or Mm -hmm. not to take your car your car anymore i think Mm -hmm. it's really a big step for for the environment because each one of us changes its habit a a little bit it will be like uh, it will have a huge impact for Mm -hmm. for the environment so yeah the small actions really count (laughs) yeah we do need to change uh, our lifestyles the national geographic even says it's a critical time now to change it's now or never (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) And we don't need to, uh, what would you say is the biggest issue in conservation nowadays? Um, I think that it's that unfortunately there is no national obligations for states uh, to protect uh, some species or some areas. And so many do not implement any conservation measures because they want to prioritize the economic uh, interests. So... So yeah, the, the actually the new EU biodiversity strategy is really ambitious. Uh, it sets great goals uh, for conservation, but the problem is that mm-hmm. uh, it does not create create any obligations for member states. So mm-hmm. it will not change uh, anything if member states uh, continue to prioritize uh, their economic uh, interests. It's not ambitious enough. At the end, we're always on the yeah. Same step, it seems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's so many things to do. And do you think that all this situation that we're living right now with this pandemic, do you think it's gonna make big, make, gonna make people change their mind and start to engage with conservation, or it's gonna stay the same? Quite pessimistic actually about <laughs> that, but I really thought that uh, seeing the nature resurging during uh, the lockdown would make people ch- change their mind about uh, the way that they live. But I feel like since we're allowed to go out again, it's uh, it's uh, become it's getting back to the same uh, to th- how things used to be, and so it's quite sad yeah. that. <laughs> Totally agree. Yeah, I also thought the same. And then I think like a few months later, I could see the plastic gloves flying mm-hmm. around the streets. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty sad. Yeah. But still, I think that uh, mainly young people are starting to see the, a conservation, are starting to set a conservation path. Which advice would you give them when f- for those people that are giving their first step on conservation? Would you recommend this kind of experience, this internship? Oh yeah, uh, definitely because uh, uh, IUCN is probably the most uh, one of the most recognized organization working in conservation. Well, actually one of the biggest. But so I think it's a great way to learn a lot about uh, the different aspects of conservation, to have a good overview of this sector and of the different related professions. And uh, an advice that I would give uh, is to start by uh, mm-hmm. working experiences on the field, like vo- volunt- uh, through voluntary volunteering experiences uh, for associations that work in conservation. I think, for example, helping them to count species or helping them to sensibilize, sensibilize people uh, about the production mm-hmm. of species. I think it's a really good start because it, being on the field uh, is great. Yeah, it allows you to really feel that you make a difference and yeah. I think it's a good start. <laughs> and you, Mariana, because you stayed at the AUCN after this internship, right? How was it? What happened? Do you recommend this? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I stayed at the AUCN for three years after my internship. I was working there in a large amount of projects and I think uh, when you're starting out in the field experiences like 
doing an internship at IUCN are super valuable because you're at the core of conservation and then you're exposed to many different groups that are working in conservation, like NGOs and governments and environment agencies. Uh, so it really, you do get a great overview of everything that's going on. For me, it was an incredible, an incredible experience. It definitely set me up for a career in conservation. And I learned and I grew up so much during that time that, yeah, I definitely recommend an opportunity like this. Uh, but I guess not everyone can afford uh, unpaid internships. So if, you know, that's the case of uh, some people, there are other ways to gain that conservation experience as well. So don't be discouraged. And I think also, well, as I mentioned, that there are a few grants that maybe you can look for them and apply so you'll have another a stipend, right? Yeah, exactly. There's there's ways of yeah. making it work. Okay, so I don't know what everyone is waiting for to apply for this internship. <laughs> <laughs> so last but not least, uh, I really wanted to know what are your future steps? What is your next challenge? What do you... But I guess, what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, so I really want to work in uh, sensibilization. So I want to specialize into communication related to the protection of environment because I think that sensibility, pe sensibilizing people to this uh, kind of problem is like uh, the first, uh, first step. Uh, it's really important. So what I'm going to do next year is that I'm going to do a second master degree specialized into communication in order to acquire some knowledge about communication strategies. And uh, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. a master in apprenticeship. So I will do it part time at school and part time in an organization. And so okay. I'm currently looking for a hosting organization uh, uh, so that works for the protection of the environment. Wow, so. that really sounds impressive, Rose. <laughs> Can I change you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to succeed in your future. So, yeah, thank you very much, Mariana and Rose, for being here today with us. It really was a pleasure to be able to interview you and have this opportunity. And, yeah, to meet someone that is so committed and has so much passion with conservation, it's, it really, it's always a pleasure. So I'm pretty sure everyone uh, enjoyed this interview as much as we did. Uh, but I was wondering if you, if you girls have any uh, any platform where we can follow your work. Uh, for me, you can follow my work on on LinkedIn. So just type uh, Rose Mergy and you will find me. Yeah, you can add me. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Mariana Garcia Criado. It's pretty long. Uh, <laughs> and I'm also on Twitter. If you want to follow me there, it's Nani Tundra. I ah, like the name. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> 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 well, thank you both again and thank you for the interviewers. <laughs> So thank you for giving us this little, a little more insight about this internship and what it involves. And of course, thank you for all the tips for our, our daily lives. We also want to thank you to everyone who has been following this interview. So if you want to know more about this internship or any other opportunities, you can find the link at the, link at the end of this interview. And do not forget to subscribe to biologia.net mailing list and stay tuned to, for more interviews, uh, opportunities, and any news on the conservation world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Bye. Thank you.